Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to talk about the four secret keywords in C Sharp. Now, why are they secret? Well, they're secret because there is no official documentation by Microsoft about them. And that means you should not use them. There's no intelligence, there's no clear guidance. They're also very unsafe in nature. So please do not think that anything in this video is actually applicable in your everyday life. It is not, meaning that please only stick around if you're curious about those keywords not if you actually want to learn something you can use in your everyday life and don't want to waste your time. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe in the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? I have a simple program.cs and the first keyword I want to talk about is the underscore underscore make ref. Now make ref will allow us to get a reference to a specific object. For example, let's say I have int some number and I want to, let's say this is 10, and then I want to get a reference to that. I can say some number here and then typed reference is what this returns. And that's it. Now, this reference to a specific uh, type is the same as a reference in C++ if you're familiar with them. Now, why would you use that in C Sharp? Well, there were a couple of good reasons why you might want to do that. By the way, the examples I'm going to show are taken by Ben Bowen's blog about the make ref keyword. So I'm going to link it down below. And if you want to check that out for more details, please do. So let's say you have a struct here. And this struct is some struct um, A. And this struct has a character. So some character. And now let's say you want to write a method that can get the size of this struct, but in a generic fashion. So let's say you have public void get uh, size of t, and then you want to do something like well, size of t equals size of t. This does not compile. This cannot actually work. And even if I say where t is struct, this still doesn't doesn't work. It's not something that C Sharp will allow you to do for manage type T. Using make ref allows us to do that. I'm going to show you the buggy version first because it's slimmer and will allow me to explain to you how it works. And then I'm going to show you the fixed version. So if I just go ahead and paste this here, let's talk about what's happening here. This is the size of with a bug. I'm going to explain what the bug is and it helps us to get the size. And actually, if I use it to show you what I mean, size of T is size of with bug. T and this, if I put a breakpoint here, and if I just comment this out, if I make this static, get size of some struct A, then debug this. And now if I step over that, I get two. Now, how does this method actually work? And why do we actually are able to get the size of a generic by using the make ref? Well, if I make this smaller, so it doesn't get in my face. So what this method is doing is creating an array of type T and then it gets references to the first and second entry in the array. And then it's getting pointers. And the reason why it's doing that is so it can subtract the second pointer from the first one. And that will give you the number of bytes allocated between the two pointers, which will basically tell you the size of the object in T. So if I do that, surely enough, it returns two. And actually we can kind of prove that because if I say size of A here, and I use the size of directly with some struct A, and this has to be unsafe. I don't want to wrap it in unsafe, though. I want to make the method unsafe. Here we go. If I do that and I debug the code, then this returns size of A is two, and this is also two. Now, some of you might say, Nick, why don't you just use the Marshall size of version? So if I say size of Marshall, which is in the Marshall class dot size of and say t well let's see what that returns so this is two this is one and this is two again the size of we we wrote with the make ref why is this one from the marshal well it is one because size of the keyword gets the managed memory the marshal size of t gets the unmanaged memory so if i were to have another struct here and let me just make this a bit more specific this is b and this is struct layout sequential and this is sequential but also the character set is now unicode here if i did the same for both let me just say b here and then this is size of a size of b let's debug this again and see what we get so first for struct a 
this is two, two, expected, unmanaged memory on Marshall, so one, and then two again. But then if I do the B, which is explicitly using Unicode character set, then these are all two, even the Marshall one, because now Unicode is two bytes. So this used to be a valid reason on why you would use something like this. However, this piece of code now has a bug. The bug is that since this array is created in here, this is a managed memory, a managed heap array, which is subject to garbage collection shenanigans. And one of those is moving the memory around. So if I move the memory around and I try to get pointers to them to subtract, I might get a completely different number, completely random number. So the fix for that looks something like this. I'm just going to paste the code. It's doing a size off when the type is one of those objects, but when it is not, it's going to pin the memory on the heap when it's allocating it to guarantee that it's not going to be moved around and then it frees it and it can be garbage collected or whatever. You don't need to know any of that. This is just here to show you an example on why you would use it. Now, the thing is that since sometime in 2017, there has been a new method added in the unsafe class. So you can do unsafe size off and you will get exactly what you want to get in the same way that we did it here in the proper method. So you no longer need to do any of that. This is now part of the framework. So if you want to get the actual size of a generic, that's what you want to use. In any case, this is what the type reference does. And now, I'm going to show you the next two keywords, which actually have to do with the type reference. The first one is the ref value, underscore, underscore, ref value. What this will do is it will allow you to get the value from a specific type reference. And in order to get the value, you need to know the type. So I also need to say int here, and then the value is this. So if I was to debug this, let's see what I get. So clearly this is a 10. And then I step over that, step over that, step over that, and I get value back integer 10. There's another way you can actually get that without using the ref value. You can do typed reference dot to object, and then you can provide the typed reference. And if I debug this again, both of them return the same value, the same object. So this is what ref value would do. And then there's another one, the underscore underscore ref type. And this, as the name implies, is going to return the type of the reference. So if I was to do that and I put a breakpoint here and I let it debug all the way down here, you will see that this returns system.int32 um, because that's the type of the thing we got the reference from. That's it. So these are the first three keywords and they're very intertwined. Not that the last one isn't, but I feel like the relationship between these three is a bit bigger. And the last one is the underscore underscore arg list. Let's see an example. Public static void argument list example. And then all I need to do here is say underscore underscore arg list. Valid code. And now in order to call this method, all I have to do is say argument list example and then underscore underscore arg list again open brackets and then let's say nick 10 some other uh, number so a bunch of arguments in the same way you would pass arguments to a method so this is basically what it will do and it's basically a fluid number of arguments so it will accept any number of them of any type and it's then up to the method to actually pass them. This was back in C sharp three where the optional arguments didn't exist. So this might have been used for internal stuff. Um, I don't know, but what you can do with this is you can say arg iterator uh, and then I can say arg iterator equals new arg iterator and pass the arg list in. And then I can say while arg iterator get remaining count more than zero and I can iterate over that and get the argument. So arg equals um, arg iterator dot get next arg. And this is, by the way, a typed reference, meaning I can do typed reference dot to object arg and I can get the value. So if I was to debug this, let's see what I get. So arg iterator here, bunch of stuff I don't understand a bunch of pointers and then the reference and we get the value and the value is Nick. So we have the first one, then you have the second one, 10, then you have the third one, 420, and then it goes out of scope and it's done. Oh, and this type explicitly is object. So you don't know what it is until you have it. So that is the fourth 
hidden keyword. Now, what's the use of this? Like I said, it was part of a time where the optional parameters weren't a thing, so it might have been used internally for some reason. I can't see why you'd really want to use it right now. So to recap, make ref will get a reference to an object, ref value will get the value, then you have ref type, which will get the type of that reference, and then arg list will allow you to pass the generic number of arguments in a method and iterate over them to retrieve them and do something with them. Now, none of this is actually useful, but I really do hope you found something interesting in this. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're gonna find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.